Lee Murray, the former MMA fighter who once fought in the UFC and allegedly knocked out Tito Ortiz in a street fight, has been described by Joe Rogan as one of the scariest motherfuckers to ever step foot in the octagon. A career criminal, Murray is currently serving a 25 year prison sentence for his involvement in the biggest cash heist in British history. This is the story of Lee Murray, aka The Real Notorious. Lee Brahim Murray Lemrani, born in 1977, is an English-Moroccan former mixed martial artist. Born to an English mother and Moroccan father, Murray was raised in the southeast London area of Butmarsh Close, Plumstead. While Murray was in primary school, him and his childhood friends named themselves the Butmarsh Boys and formed somewhat of a gang, believing they had a duty to look after Butmarsh, frequently engaging in fights with boys from neighbouring estates. Murray had a difficult relationship with his father, Brahim Lamrani, who has been described as an alcoholic and violent man who was volatile and domineering. Although his father was largely absent during the first seven years of his life, when he returned to the family, Brahim demanded his son's respect and obedience, to the point of violence and a police warning for mistreatment. Eventually, as Lee got older, he began to fight back against his father. During one of the altercations, a neighbor reported that Brahim had struck Lee, which caused Lee to finally fight back. When Lee turned around and knocked his dad clean out, he suddenly realized he could take down a grown man. This would be a turning point in Lee's life and would go on to give him the confidence to fight anyone and everyone. Their relationship grew so violent and tumultuous that Brahim decided it would be best if he left the house. As he was afraid another confrontation could result in a death, his mother Barbara was then left to raise Lee and his only sibling alone. By his mid-teens, after being expelled from school, Murray was living on the streets and was a member of a gang based in the Barnfield estate, with stealing and drug dealing being a part of everyday activity. He and his friends were allegedly in daily contact with Nigerian drug dealers who operated at Plumstead train station and an eventual turf war broke out that saw Murray and his friends win a local territory in drug trading. Murray was eventually convicted of possession of cocaine and cannabis, and was named in court and local newspapers as a notorious London drug dealer, who employed his longtime friend Paul Allen as his right-hand man that had a network of drug runners working for them. People close to Murray at the time claimed that he made a lot of money from his drug dealings and criminal activity, but Murray also proved himself to be very comfortable with the more violent side of selling drugs, often getting into physical altercations, usually to control territory and make sure customers paid their debts. Murray himself claimed that some people would probably say I was a bully, but a bully to me is someone that goes for easy targets and people who can't fight back. Me, I went for all targets. Murray was known for punching people almost at random in the street, as well as habitually harassing a man who ran a local corner shop. As a late teen, Murray was sent to juvenile detention center, the first of his custodial sentences which would be followed by more heavy punishments for robbery and assault. After serving out his sentences, Murray started spending most of his time at the gym, working out and lifting weights to try to add to his lanky six foot three frame. Joining him was Paul Allen, who by then was known as the Enforcer, presumably from drug dealing activity. Although the time spent in custody wouldn't slow down Murray's criminal activity at all. It was around this time Murray and Allen would start using steroids and spending the money they earned from selling drugs on luxury cars. This raised alarms to local police who would often make traffic stops on Murray as they suspected he was still involved in the drug trade. However, this didn't seem to phase Murray, who would often intimidate officers by following them around in his car and taunting them. This would apparently work to some extent, as the officers often felt wary to approach him. They would even go so far as to warn each other it would be best not to aggravate him, claiming he's a very dangerous man. After sticking to street crime and managing to dodge arrest for a few years, Murray was introduced to mixed martial arts, and he competed in his first fight on the 5th of December 1999 at an event called Millennium Brawl. His opponent was Rob Hudson, and Murray knocked him out in the first round, prompting the event promoter to claim, he was so quick, they called him Lightning Lee Murray. It's important to note that up until this point, Lee had no formal training. Everything he knew about fighting was learnt on the streets of London. 
Murray's successful debut led him to begin training seriously, attending two gyms, London Shoot Fighters for Wrestling and Peacock's Gym for Boxing. At the same time Murray was training at Peacock's Gym, the gym owners, the Bower brothers, were planning a series of robberies, the biggest being a brazen raid on a high security warehouse at Gatwick Airport. Their scheme involved disguising themselves as security officers, using a fake Brinks truck to get into the depot, and then stealing £1 million in foreign currency. After law enforcement found out about the planned heist, all three brothers were arrested and jailed. It has been speculated that while Murray had no prior knowledge about the intended heist, the plans that were later revealed publicly may have given him some of the ideas that were used in the similar robbery for which he was later convicted. Murray had four professional fights in the year 2000. The first was against Mike Tomlinson under the promotion Ring of Truth. Murray won the fight via submission in the first round. However, at a pub the night before, Murray would get into a fight with a fellow patron over a disputed seat at the bar. Lee Murray allegedly knocked the man out, as well as his friend who attempted to help him and the bartender who came to break up the fight. The following morning, Murray was unable to close his left hand. After taping the hand, Murray relied solely on his good hand for the fight with Tomlinson, stating that he caught him with a few good rights before the fight went to the ground and Murray submitted his opponent. According to UFC matchmaker and vice president of talent relations, Sean Shelby, Murray was involved in a scuffle with then UFC light heavyweight champion Tito Ortiz outside a nightclub in London after UFC 38 in July 2002. The story goes that both Ortiz and Murray's group of buddies were all at the nightclub drinking when a misunderstanding between one of the entourage started an all-out brawl. Tito Ortiz apparently ran towards Murray, ripping his jacket off and throwing a three-punch combination at Lee. After he ducked all three punches, Lee Murray allegedly threw a combination back at Ortiz, knocking him out cold. Murray apparently didn't stop there, as he continued to kick Ortiz while he was on the ground to make sure he didn't get up. Remember, this was the UFC light heavyweight champion at the time. Granted, both men were probably heavily intoxicated and this story might have been embellished a little bit. However, the claim was substantiated by Matt Hughes in his autobiography, as well as Pat Miletic during an interview with ESPN and also the announcer Bruce Buffer in Mike Tyson's Hot Boxing podcast. However, Tito Ortiz denies he was knocked out and Chuck Liddell has also stated that he did not see Tito knocked unconscious. Murray would go on to win six out of his next nine fights, amassing an eight, two and one record in smaller promotions before receiving a contract with the UFC in 2003. In his UFC debut, he defeated Jorge Rivera by triangle armbar in the first round. This was Murray's only fight in the UFC due to complications with his US visa as a result of ongoing criminal prosecution against him in the UK for assault after he attacked a man during a road rage incident. In fact, it's hard to believe Murray was even allowed a visa to fight in the US given his criminal history. This led Murray to sign with the UK-based Cage Rage promotion and on September 11, 2004, Lee fought future UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva in Cage Rage 8 for the vacant middleweight title. Although the fight went the distance and Lee put on a good performance, Silva would ultimately win by a unanimous decision. In 2005, his MMA career was cut short after he was stabbed multiple times outside a London nightclub. On June 25, 2006, in a joint operation with Moroccan police, Murray was arrested at a shopping centre in the capital of Rabat for suspected involvement in the Securitas Depot robbery. Moroccan police said they had to use specialist techniques to arrest the suspects because they were specialists in martial arts and firearms. In other words, they were complete badasses. The 2006 Securitas Depot robbery in Tonebridge, England was the UK's largest ever cash heist. It began with a kidnapping on the night of the 21st of February when seven criminals stole almost 53 million pounds in cash. The gang apparently left behind another 154 million pounds because they didn't have enough room in the getaway cars. After doing surveillance and placing an insider at the depot, the gang abducted the manager and his family. That same night, they tricked their way inside the building and tied up 14 workers at gunpoint. Lee Murray, the alleged mastermind, had fled to Morocco with his friend and accomplice Paul Allen before being arrested. He successfully fought extradition to the UK and was imprisoned there for the robbery. 
I'm not too sure why exactly he fought extradition to the UK, but I'm assuming it must have something to do with his criminal past and he probably assumed he would get a larger sentence in the UK. I can't imagine the conditions in Morocco would be much better than a UK prison, but then again, I could be wrong. 32 million pounds from the heist still remain uncovered and several suspects are still at large. He was convicted of the 53 million pound crime in a Moroccan court in June 2010. Police said Murray would have to serve at least 10 years in jail in Morocco for his involvement. However, in 2009, an attempt to escape prison in Morocco was made by Murray. Small sores were found in a plate of biscuits in Murray's cell by another prisoner who broke into it. Prison officials believe Murray was planning to cut through the iron bars of his cell window with the sores. To make the escape through the small window easier, Murray had lost a significant amount of weight in a short period of time. Murray was actually in a different cell at the time as a punishment for being caught with a laptop computer with internet access and 5 kilos of drugs. His sentence was then extended to 25 years on the 30th of November 2010. In 2018, Murray in an interview stated he was training to fight in prison and still planned a UFC comeback with the hope of securing a pardon from King Mohammed VI of Morocco. There have now been calls to free Lee Murray from prison due to inhumane conditions, with a petition being set up with change.org as well as a Facebook page and Instagram page that seems to be gaining a lot of traction. His family has stated that he is a changed man and not the same person he was 15 years ago. UFC President Dana White commented on Murray saying, He's a scary son of a bitch, and I don't mean fighter-wise. The guy is a legitimate gangster.